Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm about to get nerdy with you guys on reptile breeding and really kind of break down the simplicity of what I'm calling the breeding chain. And if you understand the breeding chain, you will be successful breeding snakes. But before that, I'm trying to figure out something goofy on my fish tanks here. Of course, these are my fish spas and this is on a sump, right? And so these are supposed to be equal level. You can see this one's way up here and this one's way down here. No clue what's going on. Now I will say, I've got to learn a lot about aquatics because of course now that we're trying to look into the expansion and the downstairs is going to be all aquatics, which by the way I'm going to have to hire an Aquarius because I have no idea what I'm doing. i got to figure this stuff out. I don't get it. it. I'm looking, everything seems to be working, but this one is really high and this one's really low. I'm telling you what, there's always something. When it comes to a reptile zoo, or a business for that matter, you are always problem solving. So today I'm gonna to work on that. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to fix it, but there's always a lot to do here at the Reptarium. And like I said, I cannot wait to kind of explain what I mean about the reptile breeding chain. Look at how amazing Moo Moo the cow reticulated python is looking. And you know, we always talk about Perdita because Perdita is my cow reticulated python that gets the majority of the attention. But Moo Moo is really getting some size and looking absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is an interesting thing, right? It's what they call an allelic animal, which is bred from a ghost stripe or a head ghost stripe to a phantom. And so it's kind of a cool animal that really could be in any mutation. I always talk about that mutations can cross over from different animals. So, you know, when it gets into snakes and even lizards and crocodilians and stuff like that, if there's a pied ball python, there can be a pied corn snake, there could be a pied whatever, and she is wrapping me so tight. She is definitely a weird animal compared to Perdita, the way she kind of moves and does things. She is absolutely goofy. Now she's just on the ground. Where are you going, Moo Moo? My point is, is that it's just a matter of like having the right two animals breed. One day there could be a cow ball python or there could be a cow whatever type of animal for that matter. White-sided rat snakes are a great example, right? There's white-sided rat snakes. We're seeing white-sided with rainbow bows. And believe it or not, that white caiman we have is basically like a white-sided caiman. So my point is, is mutations really can be in all types of animals. It's just a matter of hitting the right two together, right? So one day, hopefully there'll be more than just cow reticulated pythons and there'll be cow Burmese pythons and cow ball pythons and cow corn snakes and all that type of stuff. Now, is it gonna happen? Who knows, because you gotta have the right two animals breed together. But nevertheless, look at how absolutely stunning and how big this girl is getting. She is becoming one of my favorites for sure. And again, I love allelic animals and cow retics are absolutely stunning. That's the shed again with this guy. So, is it, is, it, is this from the Reptarium or is this from the HB? Oh, well, wait a minute. It looks like a rhino rat to me. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the shed that I pulled out this morning. But you're right. I think it's a rhino rat. Look at the little appendage on the nose. That's definitely a rhino rat. It is, but I have another one. Okay, so you have another one? Okay. Play some hold music. Okay. Well, this is kind of tough because it's just a piece of one. Well, I thought you were a professional though, so you should be able to do it. It's got no pattern on it. Mm-hmm. This is a hard one. All right, I'm going to take a guess. It's a female to start with. So it's a female. So what female clubber? I'm going to say snowflake. How does he do this? Wait, what? He got it? How does he do this? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Did you know Susan said? No, I had no idea. Oh seriously. my God, I don't want to play this. Are you guys ready to get into the simplification of the breeding chain? But to get started, I think I'm going to need this. That's a lot better. It's amazing how if you have the proper attire, you actually feel smarter. I am gonna also need that. Now that's much better. The only thing that I need left now, now we're ready. So basically what we have going on here is actually the breeding chain. And basically what this means is that there is actually a chain of events that needs to happen in order to be successful breeding. It's actually more of a cyclical thing than it is an actual linear chain, right? And there's really only three things. The first thing is, follicles. And of course the follicles are basically just the start of eggs, right? The follicles have to grow to a size, then there's an ovulation, and then ultimately that ovulation turns into eggs, which ultimately turn into babies. The second thing is copulation. Of course, copulation helps in aiding the follicular growth. Now the last thing, and honestly a pretty important part, is food. Now, again, these things all work in tandem with one another. So you have to understand that they all are related to one another. We start with 
follicles, we go to copulation, we go to food. This is a cycle right here, and you need to understand that the cycle is all related, right? So oftentimes, we may start with follicles, and the follicles actually spur on copulation. Copulation then stirs on food. Now, it can work in different ways. Let's say that females aren't growing a lot of follicles at that point. We can get a copulation, which causes the female to actually grow follicles. Now, when she's growing follicles, she is wanting to feed more, which will cause more follicle growth, which causes more copulation, which ultimately ends up in eggs. So you have to understand that there is a symbiosis between these three things. And if you can understand these three things alone, you will be successful breeding any reptile because it's always food driven, follicle growth driven, and copulation driven. They have to all work in together. So let's go ahead and break this down. Let's say we have a ball python that is at 10 millimeter follicles right here. Now that's a little bit small. That may not actually entice this male to want to breed. It's possible, it's maybe not possible. But the fact that the male is in with the female could spur on follicle growth that could go from 10 millimeters to say 13 millimeters. Now, if that doesn't work, food will actually pump follicle growth because the more food in it, the more the female's gonna produce follicles thinking that there's gonna actually be food for her babies which causes her to produce follicles. Now, as she produces follicles, it's gonna spur on males to copulate that female. And the more that that male copulates, the more she's gonna to wanna to feed in order to grow the follicles from 13 to 15 to 20 and so on like that. It's a cycle, right? So it starts with follicles but doesn't have to necessarily be the key. The key can often be food or copulation, depends on how you wanna do it. But if you understand that all three of those things are very important, you can't really have follicle growth, copulation without food. If you do that, you're not gonna have production. You can have follicle growth and food without copulation, because obviously you're not gonna get baby snakes. So they have to work in tandem. It is a breeding chain, in this way, a cycle. The follicles cause copulation, causes then driven to food, which causes more follicles, which causes more copulation. And obviously, the end result is ovulation. And ovulation then turns into eggs, which turns into baby snakes. And that is basically the simplicity of understanding that. If you can get a really good grasp on follicle to food to copulation and continue to use those. Now, granted, not everyone has an ultrasound and you won't know if they're 10 millimeters, 13 millimeters, 15 millimeters, but you can still use the same principle. You can palpate your females. You know, take for instance, a BB is about 10 millimeters, right? So if you're feeling the underside of a snake and you feel a BB in there, she's at about 10 millimeters. You get to about 15 millimeters, now you're at about a marble size, right? And 20 millimeters, you start getting to ping pong size, 25, 30, you're getting into chicken egg size. You get the idea, right? Doesn't matter, even if you don't know what the follicle growth is, you can still use the same principle by getting copulation, which is gonna cause follicle growth, Follicle growth and copulation is gonna cause increased amount of desire to feed. Increased amount of food is gonna cause follicle growth, which is gonna in turn cause copulation. You see, it's actually not that difficult if you can actually put that together. Again, follicles, copulation, food. That's all you need to know. That's it. If you can actually keep that breeder chain going in that cycle, you will be successful, whether it's a ball python, a corn snake, a bearded dragon, monitor lizard, crocodilian, whatever it is. You need to cycle those things. Now, some of the things that can actually spur follicle growth on besides copulation and food could be temperature, could be humidity, but typically food is the number one trigger that's gonna cause follicle growth. So there it is, that's in a nutshell. I hope that you guys now understand how to breed reptiles. And if you can master this cycle, this breeding chain, you will be absolutely successful. Back at you with another great deal on Raycons. I've been working with Raycon now for the last year and a half and really have an amazing relationship with the company because I am so absolutely obsessed with this product. I've told you before, I literally use Raycons every single day. Whether it's here at work where I'm dealing with big snakes, I don't want wires hanging down, or when I'm at home or even at the gym. The everyday E25s are so comfortable and the noise isolating ability of these guys are amazing. I mean, when I don't want to deal with uh, you know, the crew or something like that, I just put these on. I'm 
I'm listening. I'm binging audiobooks. I listen to music all the time. I mean, you guys are going to absolutely love them. And with a six hour charge time and a really amazing little carrying case that can charge up to four times, you could be listening to Raycons for weeks. It seems like sometimes I go a month without plugging them in and I still have life in them. I don't understand. And this pair I'm wearing right now, I've had for a year and a half. And I'm pretty tough on electronics. I'm not going to lie to you. So the fact that they're still around is pretty amazing. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands and sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. Raycon offers wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options. And there's a 45 day return policy if for some reason you're not happy with it. It's a great company co-founded by Ray J. And hey, celebrities like Snoop Dogg, J.R. Smith, and even Mike Tyson are obsessed with these guys. So you know they gotta be absolutely amazing, right? And with the way things are right now, sometimes it's good to unplug from screens, right? So you can actually throw these in. You can binge again your favorite shows, your favorite podcast. Again, I'm a big audio book guy, so I love to listen to them on these guys. So right now, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. That's right. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. The last little bit of this is when do you stop reading? Because a lot of times people make the mistake of stop reading too early and then the females ended up not producing the follicles to actually ovulate and then so on like that. This girl is at 28 to 30 millimeters right now. Basically, I want a last breeding at 30 to 33 millimeters. If she breeds at 30 to 33 millimeters, I can then shelf her. She's going to ovulate at about 45 millimeters, but from 33 to 45, you literally only take 7 to 10 days once they start advanced growing like that. So basically, it's a 99% lock. If you have an animal that's 30, 33 millimeters, gets one last breeding in, then you're going to get an ovulation in about 50 days after that ovulation, you're going to get eggs. Now again, if you don't have an ultrasound, a 30 to 33 millimeter is going to feel about the size of a chicken egg. Lori, so you've been doing all the pet. By the way, this is so cool. I mean, that is so cool. What is that? That's cupcake? Yes. Oh my See, God. It says it right there. That's cupcake. awesome. So you've been doing all the packaging of this. Look at this. Elvis? No, Jay, Jay's done a lot Jay's of it. Jay's done a lot of but it? I was just working on it last night when I had in between helping Got people. snaz here. These are such cool. So listen, I want to launch a website called snakeshed.com and we'll sell let me know in the comments if you guys are down for this look at these look at these snake sheds show them <laughs> what, what 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 are you talking about all right look at look at these look at these snake shed here take one look at that snakeshed.com and you can buy snake sheds like this i also thinking about snakeeggs.com where you could buy snake eggs not like hatch snake eggs what do you think good idea Snakeshed.com, snakeeggs.com. Okay, that's a great idea. You're, you'll do all that packaging and shipping of those. No, no, I need you because yeah. you're really no, good no, at this. No. You're really good at this. What it's else really do we have? It's really easy and you'll be able what to do it. What else do we have? Oh, look, it's snakeeggs.com. That's, that's gecko eggs. Yeah, but this snakes. is, okay, reptileggs.com. I got that too. <laughs> reptileggs.com. That's cool, right? It's a good idea, no? Yeah, like I said, I'll teach you how. You'll be great. No, I don't have time, Lori. Can you and please? I don't have time. Yeah, okay, we're going to hire. <laughs> we're looking for another employee to hire that could do packaging of snakeeggs.com and, and snakesheds.com. also not true. <laughs> what are you talking about? It is true. I oh think it's a great God. idea. Let me know in the comments if you guys are down because I think it's a. Re I, we're doing it. Yeah. Don't you ever should, throw another shed away or another send egg away. All resumes oh. for that position to be. Yeah, snakeshed.com. <laughs> snake yeah, snakeshed.com. And, and snakeegg.com. Link in the description. Exactly. Snakeegg.com. See, he's in. And alligatorteeth.com. Link oh, in the wait, description. Wait, wait, I don't have that one. <laughs> wait, to scratch that. I'll, I'll look into <laughs> it though. But uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, that's a good idea, Jay. I like it. Thank you. Alligatorteeth.com. Still no resolution with the fish tank here. For some reason, the gravity feed just isn't working right. Uh, I've tried pretty much everything, don't know what I'm doing, so I called my buddy Steve from Bashy Aquatics, and uh, hopefully he can come by in the next day or two and figure it out. It doesn't see, it's not overflowing, so we're in good shape, but I don't understand why, because it's gravity-fed sump, so they should be equal, right? You know, there's no reason. So I'm almost wondering if the, the tube that is going down here is actually somehow blocked or something is going on. I'm not 100% sure. Don't know what's going on, but nevertheless, uh, that's the way it's going to have to be for the day. Can't fix it because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Guys, guess what? I'm excited about this. Oh, that's right. You can get your Bella merch right now. You can get it in this color. You can get it in all kinds of everything. You can get hoodies. You can get mugs if you want. It's only going to be available for a little bit of time. Uh, link is down in the description. Oh.
And don't forget that you can actually go to Reptarium.com and get your coloring book off. This one doesn't fit quite as good as the Bella Merch. You're going to be really mad because the floor is very wet. Oh my gosh. It's okay, we didn't mop yet. You guys are something else. Come on, Jay. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I got her, I got her. <laughs> He's like, I got her. He's like, I did it all myself. Get me out of here, you monkey. I'm gonna piss her off. She, she she's very angry right now. What? Guys, check this out. Actually, this is the first time we've seen. They're not locked up, but there's no doubt that he is twirling his tail, and uh, that is absolutely breeding mode right there. That's not just like, oh, I'm going to rest my tail. It's curled underneath. That is the first step that we've ever seen them actually go to this point. Now, again, next step would hopefully be breeding, but that is absolutely exciting. That's cool, huh? <laughs> Lori multitasking over here on the phone, hurting her tortoises. Jay. What? Okay, about the alligatorteeth.com thing. Did you get it? Unfortunately, it's taken. Oh. But we are now the proud new owners of reptileteeth.com. Boom! There you go. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, reptile breeding chain and understand the way to breed snakes and reptiles a little bit more. Let me know in the comments if that helped out, if you're interested in it. I can do more stuff like that in the future if you so choose. If you do enjoy this video, here's an entire video of snakes laying eggs. If you're into the snake breeding thing, you'll love that. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. Over here, we are literally 22,000 away from 3 million. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.